Okay, so some time ago, earlier this month, a very interesting package from Kimfin Cooling arrived at my doorstep. So in this video we will be taking a look at a brand new graphics card container that will be coming out to the market very very soon, pretty much ne uh, during next week, if the information that I heard earlier today is correct. So stay tuned for possible updates from KimpingCooling.com and let's open up this package and let's look at the container itself talk a little bit about my overall experience with these uh, latest containers with the latest graphics card generations and so on but, but anyway so let's get this uh, box open up let's remove these stickers and the cover and that one over there is the uh, retail and final version of the uh, Kimping Cooling Tech 9 Icon Extreme and this is the revision 4.0. So let's remove it from the uh, packaging. And we have the uh, mounting screws inside the container. So uh, it's pretty much the same as the beta version of the Icon Extreme that I've been using since last spring or so. We can actually put them side by side. The main difference between these two is that the retail version has nickel plating or nickel coating and that's absolutely something that I really prefer. My overall experience now with uh, the latest like CPU and graphics card containers is that if the pot doesn't have nickel plating, if it's just uh, based on like pure copper design over here, it can get damaged quite quickly after a lot of mounting and that's absolutely something you don't want to get. So with uh, the better version of the Icon Extreme, I've had like oxidation, as you can see already over here, there's some oxidation at the edges of the button that touches the uh, graphics card's GPU and after a lot of mounting the uh, contact surface over here will get some deep scratches that can obviously harm the temperature performance of the container and then if you want to improve the thermal so the thermal conductivity of the container you have to lap the pot and uh, lapping graphics card containers is quite tricky compared to uh, CPU containers. With containers that have uh, nickel plating I've never done any uh, lapping because there's absolutely uh, no need. Nickel is a lot more stronger material than pure copper. It has a little bit worse thermal conductivity I know but it's a lot stronger material and it really helps to prevent any like serious damage on the uh, pot's surface. So that's why the longevity of a nickel plated like metal object like a container is a lot better. And that's why I would always choose a nickel plated container, no matter if it's a CPU container or a graphics card container. It is a lot better in the long run if it has nickel plating. And that's why all of the containers from Kimping Cooling as well as from Debauer, they do have nickel plating. Other like practical differences there aren't really many between these two. The internal design is pretty much the same, with one exception. So if we, uh, com if we put these like side by side, you can see the internal design is pretty much the same, but the uh, retail version has uh, sideways milling over here. So it's milled from this side, but not from the bottom. So uh, if, we, uh, if I try to zoom you in a little bit, there's some uh, like sideways holes. You may be able to see them like briefly. But there are there's some sideways like uh, connection between these holes. So the this one has a lot more surface area than the uh, beta version or some of the earliest versions or revisions. So uh, this one should be very fast for the initial pull down, and it and it's pretty much geared towards full pot action, as you can imagine. That's why there's absolutely no need to purchase a container like this for a very low power graphics card model that only runs between like minus 80 or minus 160. The current Tech9 icon that's already listed at KimpingCooling.com can get pretty much the same end result as uh, this container could if you could mount it, if you could mount this pot onto the uh, target graphics card that I used as an example in this case. This will at least support the latest RTX 3090 and I think Kimpin will add a different bracket for a 2080 Ti as well because both of those cards or GPUs die size is pretty large so this pot can definitely fit both of those uh, uh, generations. 
Here's the uh, latest mounting bracket for the standard icon with uh, most options. If we put it over the contact area of the Tech 9 icon, the, you can see that the most inner options they wouldn't fit with this container, but you could definitely add many of the outer options to the icon extreme. That's the main comment I gave to Kimpin about the spot that he could honestly add more graphics card options to the icon extreme like GDX 580, GDX 4080, 780 Ti, 7970, I think even 7970 could fit. Yeah, 7970 should be able to fit this container as well. With many of those cards, if you really use the knowledge we have got from these modern generations, and if you apply that same knowledge to the older like uh, generations, you can go to full pot temperatures and you could actually gain something from this particular uh, container. If I was Kimpin, that's the only change I would apply to this container. Like add more mounting options. It would give more value to this product. So I definitely hope Kimpin will make like a, a last minute change like that to this uh, uh, pot design. It's not just a container. Kimpin will also include a GPU Inferno with this uh, particular uh, container. GPU Inferno is pretty much not needed with uh, graphics cards that only run at around like minus 80 to minus 150. With 3090 you start to get uh, memory issues after minus 150. If you run 3090 on LN2 in Port Royal and similar tests at, at like minus 120, minus 130, you will not get any like uh, dramatic performance drop from uh, the memory chips being too cold. It usually happens at around like minus 150 and colder. And that's where an Inferno unit can be very handy. When we uh, benched uh, two-way SLI with Chokot in uh, early October of this year, we used uh, a GPU Inferno on the second card and then we used a hairdryer on, uh, for the first card. So uh, you can obviously use a hairdryer, but trust me, a simple and compact unit like this is a lot more com uh, comfortable to use than something like a hairdryer. And uh, this uh, unit has been uh, improved or updated from uh, the earliest revisions of the GPU Inferno. This one has a lot more power, so this will run a lot harder than uh, the earliest better versions. So this will definitely run warm. So don't get scared. So uh, you definitely don't need this if you run a graphics card on dry ice for example or uh, something like that. Uh, there's absolutely no need to get this particular uh, heater plate if you only run a graphics card at minus 50 on dry ice for example. So uh, if you want to get the best performance with uh, the GPU Inferno uh, on a 3090 for example I honestly recommend you use a full cover thermal pad and you may add like if you use a very thin thermal pad like uh, I actually had very good performance with uh, the thermal grizzly minus pad over here you could cut a separate pad for the center part over here then add a full cover thermal pad on top I wouldn't use if you want to get the best performance do not use a cut like this so uh, like no uh, heat transfer at the center so uh, this is the main difference between uh, Kimping Cooling's Inferno unit and the uh, like the Elmore Labs hot heater plate. On the uh, Kimping Cooling's units, the heat comes from the center, so directly behind the GPU. But on uh, Elmore's units, the heat is applied at the sides, and the center is cold. So uh, if you want the best heat transfer from the Inferno unit across the whole cards PCB use a full cover thermal pad. When I used that uh, like center cut option over here, I still had huge performance drops uh, with 3090 in tests like Time Spy Extreme, for example. But I never had performance drops if I used a full cover thermal pad. With some other like uh, graphics card models with 7970, which you may like, which you may not want to get so warm if you only want like a little bit less heat load or heat applied on the memory chips, then you can use a thermal pad that's being cut like that. But that's what I've experienced this far. But yeah, so uh, I will definitely try this container as I really want to give like a one more proper attempt with the 3090, at least in Time Spy Extreme, because I've tried it so much 
the biggest issue in my case is that uh, I cannot run full pot constantly. Being able to run full pot is very hard with these latest generations of graphics cards like 3090, 2080 Ti. Many of us like high-end users like me, the Greek guys, Roth from Sweden, Biso Biso. It has required a lot of practice before all of us have been able to go to full pot temperatures. You have to lap the graphics card's GPU because if the, if the uh, GPU surface isn't uh, very flat, the uh, thermal paste can crack very, very easily. So the uh, die has to have very flat surface and then still you need very good thermal paste that doesn't really crack very easily. That's one of the main reasons that really doesn't give me like a lot of motivation for extreme overclocking. I really would like to see that everyone who purchases this pot could run like 3090 and similar uh, card models that can run this pot at full pot temperatures constantly. If you are able to go to full pot temperatures easily and run it for long periods of time, then you can honestly enjoy a container like this. If you purchase this container, even with the he uh, heater plate, if you only get like thermal paste cracking somewhere around like minus 160, minus 170, then you will not get much benefit from this container because to be able to benefit from a container like this, you need to be able to go to full pot temperatures. That's where this container can give you advantage over the standard Tech9 icon. When it comes to uh, insulating and adding the thermal probe, the probe spot is over here, so it's quite far away from the uh, contact area itself, but there's absolutely uh, good reason for that. So uh, when Kimpin was using like a deep hole at the button itself, like uh, it went between the container and the uh, heat source or the GPU, but that can actually have a negative impact on thermal performance. So it doesn't matter if the thermal, if the, if you can run full pot temperatures, it doesn't matter where the uh, probe is because the temperatures are as good as they can be. So now the uh, probe placement is quite far away from the contact area, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, you can still get an idea where the temperatures are, even if the probe is placed over here. And yes, definitely get a Kimping cooling uh, bint K-type probe, which I already had attached on the beta version. And then I will just insulate the container the same way as I've done with all of my containers recently. So first cover the container in electrical tape, then add one layer of three millimeters thick Armaflex insulation tape and you should be good to go. And just use like Kimping Cooling KPX or similar thermal paste around the probe to get the best possible thermal readings. Pricing wise, the standard icon is listed at around like $350 at KimpingCooling.com currently. So I don't know what's the price of this combination, but I would expect the price is at least at, a, at around like $450. So the pot plus Inferno, but it could be even more. That's like, that's, that's, that's only what I would guess, like between maybe like 450 and 600. 600 would be quite high, but I don't know. I, uh, at the time of making this video, everything is just going so expensive. All of like raw materials are becoming more expensive. So it's definitely not cheap to produce containers like this. We will see what's the final price when it gets listed at KimpingCooling.com. But definitely a good container. Honestly, if Kimping could add more of these uh, mounting options onto this bracket, as it's definitely possible, I would be absolutely happy about this container. So uh, if it's only uh, supporting 3090, it's kind of, it uh, kind of takes a lot of the uh, value away from this container, as this can definitely mount many different graphics card generations. But yeah, what do you think? Would you, do you agree with my opinion about the different mounting options? Would it be uh, wise to add more mounting options uh, so to support like all the graphics card generations? What do you think? And uh, what do you think about this container? Would you have any interest on this pot? There aren't that many uh, like uh, pot manufacturers or, uh, on the market as the extreme overclocking uh, like market isn't very large, but at least we still have Kimping Cooling making these pots and they are very, very good and can always do the job just fine. So uh, 
definitely give me a thumbs up and stay tuned for this pod and just follow Kimping Cooling website and his page on Facebook as he will definitely post an update when it when this pod is available for order and subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.